Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to talk about Alpaca mainly. Well, dig a little bit into Llama, um, another model, but basically we're going to be talking about natural language processing artificial intelligence models that you can run on your own computer. Now up to this point, everyone's been talking about OpenAI and GPT or ChatGPT. Those are all available over the internet. You're submitting something to OpenAI um, and they will run the model on their massive computers, charge you, you know, a fraction of a penny and you're going to get a response back. You aren't running anything on your computer. You aren't doing any of the work. Um, when GPT came out, every major tech company kind of revealed what they were working on and Meta aka Facebook, had a uh, llama in their back pocket. Now you'll notice that it's a 65 billion parameter model, uh, which is quite a bit smaller than the several hundred billion parameters in GPT. But what's interesting is that Meta's version uh, it goes as low as 7, 13, 33 billion parameters, so quite small, but their size makes it possible for you to run this on your computer, your laptop. In fact, it's it's so um, it's so not demanding um, that others have ran it on phones, uh, like like the Pixel series, um, and some have even run it very slowly, albeit on Raspberry Pi devices. So you can imagine that any modern day computer should be able to run Llama at a respectable pace, not blazing fast, but uh, will be able to provide some results. So you're able to run it locally on your computer. You don't need any supercomputers. You're not charged by the, the dollar. And the other thing is um, Meta has made this open source. So what we're going to be using is actually Alpaca from Stanford. Uh, there is a slight difference here, but essentially this one is has been made very easy for us to install. Um, and we're going to go through the process. I believe it's going to be very simple, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and, and lastly, there is a slight difference. Um, Alpaca is much closer to ChatGPT. Um, you're giving it instructions. Please tell me X. Please write Y. Please, um, you know, complete this paragraph. You're, you're giving instructions to this model. Whereas the traditional or the earlier Llama model from Meta is much more a completion. So like standard GPT, not GPT not chat GPT, which means that you start writing a couple sentences, it automatically fills in the next sentences and paragraphs. So this is uh, a different way. Um, and I think right now the chatbot approach seems to have taken hold uh, much stronger. So uh, I did a bit of research. Uh, you have a lot of repositories out there with Llama and, and Alpaca, but what I want to take a look at is uh, Llama CPP, so uh, C++. This one has made it possible for you to run it in a variety of places. So while Meta had made it open source, they didn't make it very easy for you, know, you and me to actually make use of it. So of course, uh, talented programmers, uh, teams of contributors have made it possible and they've built this C++ application. And um, since I'm more interested in Alpaca, you can see this is a fork of, um, of, of uh, this is not a fork of this one, but uh, this is Alpaca C++. So we're gonna download, we're gonna download this and I am thinking this is actually the wrong one. So let me go back. Here we go. This is the correct one. Uh, this is a fork of the one I was looking at. So Llama, similarly, Alpaca is uh, a very related model. So somebody had forked it and made a different package. <clears throat> so first things first, one of the things is you have to download the model. 
Uh, I downloaded the 7 billion parameter model. As you recall from Meta's post, uh, there is uh, 7, 13, 33, 65. I think there are other sizes as well, and there are others in the in in the wild there that have been trained additionally on top of these. So somebody took more parameters and threw it in there. Um, I'm taking the 7 because this is the one that seems to be running on just about everything, on a Raspberry Pi, on um, you know your phones, and so on. Uh, when you get more and more parameters, that's when it takes uh, more and more uh, power to actually run. So I'm very curious on the lowest end where you can run it on your phone, how the performance is. So downloaded it, it's about four gigs of, of space. So it's not overwhelming, but it's not a small file either. From here, I understand we just go to releases, download the corresponding one. You have Windows, Mac, Linux. So I'm gonna download the Windows version. Well, I'll open it here and I'm going to go back here um, and, and take a look. I'm a bit distracted. Let's go through. I'm, I'm forking my thoughts all over the place. Um, if you're interested, uh, I was looking at this page because it also allows for Android. So if you download their... Uh, if you, if you follow and create the Android app here, you'll be able to run it on your phones or tablets. Uh, I was curious about that, but these guys make it very easy. You just download the, the Windows version, um, <clears throat> and basically drag and drop. So we're gonna place it in the same folder this is not very large. This is like a couple hundred kilobytes, maybe a megabyte in total, less than a megabyte in total. So I'll close this up. And then once we've downloaded, um, we'll just run. So let's try this out, chat.exe. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna run anyways. <clears throat> and you'll see it start here. So we're running in chat mode. I wonder if I can zoom in so you folks can take a look. <clears throat> you have a bunch of information about what I'm doing. They're using two gigs of memory space. Um, I don't know what the rest of these numbers are, but uh, let's see, control C to interject. So you can control C to uh, stop while they're running the model. Click return to return control to llama. And then if you want to submit another line and your inputs in, okay, I see. So uh, I have a handful of test questions on the side here, and I also have open AI. So we have ChatGPT 3.5, and ChatGPT4 to test with. <clears throat> I'm gonna test the very basic here. Um, no, let's let's go with something that I think ChatGPT might do a bit better. Uh, a factual question. This is generally not how you should be using these models, but let's see what is the title of the first Harry Potter book. book? We're going to run ChatGPT3 first. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone or Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Very good. And I suspect GPT4 will perform just about the exact same thing. Exactly. Okay, let's see if Alpaca has the same response here. Enter. I can hear my computer just spinning up. I hope this doesn't um, affect my recording. The Philosopher's Stone. Uh, it's straight to the point. I like it. Oh, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I guess that's close enough. Um, so it does have some of this basic information. You can get some facts, remembering that that's not how you're supposed to use it, and it wouldn't know anything about recent news. Okay. Next one. 
Write a simple math addition problem, two-digit numbers, that is witty and funny. You should make use of Mario characters in the problem. Enter. While it's working on that, I'm going to ask GPT-4. Oops. Ah. See, you can't cancel out of GPT, so... Um... Luigi found 23 super mushrooms and Mario collected 45 super mushrooms. How many one-up lives will they have together in the mushroom kingdom? Um, I am not sure what that actually means. Do you need to collect like 100 mushrooms to get one-up? So this isn't the greatest response, but this is from GPT-4. Now let's try this with GPT-3.5. Mario had 45 coins and gave 12 coins to Luigi. How many coins does Mario have left to buy mushrooms and flowers to fight Bowser? This is pretty good. Okay, let's check out how Alpaca is doing. It's still writing, so interesting. It was so short and terse before, but now it's running... Um, quite a while. So Mario was walking down to his favorite restaurant, but he didn't have enough money for it. He needed 10 more dollars so he could eat there today. Luckily, Luigi just found a gold coin and gave him all 25 cents of them. That doesn't make sense to me. Mario quickly ran home with the coins in hand. He counted the pennies, dimes, nickels, and quarters until he finally reached $10 exactly. He was so happy that now he could eat at his favorite restaurant. But wait a minute, what if Luigi had given him only 24 cents? Mario would have been stuck with no money to buy anything. Again, that doesn't really make sense. Mario quickly ran back home and this time counted all of the coins again until finally reaching $10 exactly. He was so happy that he could now eat, he could, that now he could eat at his favorite restaurant, but what? So it started repeating, and I don't really see the question here, so I'm not sure, and it wanted to do some sort of, um, it wanted to do some sort of coin counting exercise. So uh, I'm gonna cancel out here. No, uh, okay, so I canceled out. I don't know why it's repeating, but that's not a great result. Let's try another one here. This one's gonna be more creative. So we know that GPT-4 does a bit better with creativity. Once again, we're using GPT-3 here. Write an eight line rhyming poem about the joys of sunny weather in Mexico. So I'm very glad that GPT-3 had actually put out eight lines. In Mexico, the sun shines bright, its warmth a natural delight, bright and delight. The beaches beckon and the waves so blue, a paradise for me and you. Uh, that's, I think that's pretty good. Let's try with GPT-4. GPT-4 has a bit more um, artisticness in here. In Mexico, the sun beams bright and bold, a golden hue that never grows old. With warm breezes that carry a song, this vibrant land is where we belong. I think that's pretty good. And we are going to paste this into Alpaca. I can hear my computer spinning up again. I really should have done this Ask Alpaca first, and then check with ChatGPT. So you can see that um, if speed and time is a concern, uh, OpenAI has the advantage here. The heat is on, and it'll be soon. Uh, it'll soon be time for fun. Sunshine brings out all our happy moods. You see, we can dance to music or just sit back with a drink. It doesn't matter what we do in Mexico isn't as good again um it's not eight lines it doesn't rhyme but it's a good image for sure so um performance is just so so here okay last one uh this is gonna be interesting um you see up here if you want to submit another line and your input in uh backslash so I'm going to say summarize the following paragraphs in one or two sentences, backslash. Then I'm going to paste 
the first paragraph here, backslash, and then this one. Uh oh. Oh no. Um. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Llama just died, so I'm opening up another. Uh, another window here. So let's try this again. So it might just be too long. It, it died again. So let's let's ask it to s summarize one paragraph. And I'll have to change this to a following paragraph. And click enter. Oh man, um, it's dying. So I don't know, is my computer overheating maybe? I don't think so. It's much more powerful than a phone. All right, uh, I'm gonna start by asking GPT-4 and we're gonna open Llama again. And we're gonna ask that first question we asked about Harry Potter. See if it's just a technical error on my part rather than so something about summarizing is difficult or maybe the new line so uh, i took out the new line and just threw it all into one question okay um i don't know what to say uh this is not working out so uh, i'm gonna take out you know what, uh, paraphrase this sentence. So it is easier to understand. All right, I have a shorter prompt here. Paraphrase the sentence so it is easier to understand. Instruction following models such as GPT 3.5, ChatGPT, blah, 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 have become increasingly powerful. This should hopefully be less long. So I'm going to copy here, paste this here, run it on GPT 4. Models that follow instructions like GPT 3.5, ChatGPT, blah, 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 are becoming more and more advanced. Very simple, that works. Paraphrasing GPT 3. Models that can follow instructions are now much more powerful. Um, GPT 3, 4, they have very similar responses and they're both good. Over here, instruction following GPTs like and that's wrong, like text da Vinci 0. Uh, 0.003 are becoming more sophisticated with each passing day as models such as GPT, ChatGPT, Chat, and Bing Chat have become increasingly powerful. Uh, I mean, that's acceptable. I don't think it's any easier to understand, but it is a, it is a response. And then here, they're starting to write some other random stuff. The answer is yes, the Gauss law states that the total electric charge, like this has nothing to do with anything. So I'm very, oh, I think I must have clicked enter. So it's trying to figure out what to do with that empty space. So no, let's not hold this against um, Alpaca, but you can see uh, the responses that we've gotten. So let's sum up now that we're hitting 19 minutes. Um, Alpaca is really interesting because it's open source. That means it's going to get better. Uh, more and more people will pour resources into it. And, you know, you can see that it's perfectly functional. It's not amazing. Uh, it doesn't match up to OpenAI's massive uh, lead ahead of other people. But running it locally, running it yourself, not having to pay for it, running it on your phone or laptop, are all massive advantages. Um, and I'm only hoping that 
over time it'll get better and better so for now it's it's pretty decisive whether you're asking facts simple questions the questions that need creativity it's it's a blowout like open ai does better across the board um if you're paying attention to gpt4 and 3.5 uh gpt4 wasn't that massive of a leap in fact it wasn't much of a leap at all for most of our questions so i'm hoping that that means open AIs have kind of hit a peak and, and you know, there'll be improvements, but Alpaca has the opportunity to make leaps and bounds of, um, of uh, improvement over time. Now, these things saying that they have GPT-3 level capabilities, I, I always suspected it might be exaggerating it a bit. Um, and it is. Uh, it's impressive, but... If you want something polished, this is not the way to go. And uh, the reason I was suspicious was because there are other open source uh, trained weights that you can run on your own supercomputer, not as uh, not as friendly as Llama, but in theory you can run uh, uh, other similar tactics on, on other supercomputers. Those have never really lived up to OpenAI in my testing. They're just not as good no matter how many times they claim they're at GPT-3 levels. So you got to watch where you're going. For me, I'm not scaling. I'm not making these massive projects. So I'm happy to pay OpenAI the couple pennies, a couple dollars a month. But OpenAI is really expensive for what it is. Um, or rather, it's... It's expensive and it can add up and it doesn't scale very well because it, it just can blow up to thousands, tens of thousands of dollars very easily. Uh, it's it's worth it in my opinion for a lot of cases, but um, it's not cheap by any means and it's not that accessible to people who can't afford it. So uh, I'm done rambling. Uh, I hope this was interesting. Uh, I was very pleased that Alpaca is really easy to set up if you find the right um, right repositories. Uh, the one we were looking at is Antimatter 15's uh, version of Alpaca CPP, but I suspect that there will be many others that are cropping up in the next months, years, and so on. So um, I'll leave a link below, but do check out whether there are others as well. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next week when we do another video. Thanks for watching.